A few weeks back, friend and subscriber of mine, Libby, reached out to me because she was noticing something interesting about her Instagram insights. She was observing a strange trend when it comes to the types of posts that she was posting to her Instagram feed that seemed to indicate a certain type of post always got more reach, like every single time. So I had to find out for myself if this secret algorithm hack for more reach worked for me too, or if it was just a weird glitch. So keep on watching to find out what that hack is and to see if this is truly the secret to higher reach on your Instagram posts. Before we dive into my experiment and my results, I wanna talk a bit about why reach is so important on Instagram. For most of you watching, you probably spend most of your time looking up videos on YouTube or reading blog posts about how to get higher engagement, how to grow more followers. I would be surprised if you told me that you actually searched out how to increase my reach on Instagram. It's just not one of those exciting metrics that we're all trying to work towards, probably honestly because it's not a public number. So nobody can see how big our reach is, they only see our likes and followers. However, even though it's not that often talked about, reach is an essential part of the puzzle when it comes to growing on Instagram. Without reach, you're not gonna have access to new potential followers and therefore your followers are not going to grow. In case you're new to the vocabulary of Instagram insights, here is a very brief explanation of what is reach and what is impressions. These are words you might have seen when you click view insights on one of your feed posts and maybe you found it confusing, so I'm gonna explain it. So reach is the total number of unique users that saw your Instagram post. All of the different people who saw your feed post at one time or another. You'll see that it's broken down into different categories. The total number includes whether people saw it on their feed, in the hashtags, in the location tag, shared on somebody else's story, embedded on a website somewhere. All of those different places count towards your reach and reach is the number of the different people who saw your post in all of those different places. On the other hand, we have impressions, and you've probably noticed that impressions is always higher than reach, and that's because impressions is more similar to a view count, kind of like views on YouTube. People can watch the same YouTube video more than once, people can see the same Instagram post more than once. So if I see the same post in my feed twice, that's two impressions, but only one count towards reach. So hopefully that makes sense. Reach is like all the different people you're reaching, obviously, and impressions are basically the number of views total that your Instagram post has received, even if there's duplicate users in those impressions. So now that you understand reach and impressions, let's talk about why it's important. Often when we're looking at our Instagram insights, I know I can overlook the reach and impressions part because I just wanna know how many likes, how many comments, shares, and saves. Those seem like the most important metrics, but actually reach is super significant when it comes to your organic growth on Instagram the higher the reach, the more potentially new followers will see it. That is how you find new people on Instagram that aren't following you yet. They see your content, they like it, they click the follow button. And Instagram insights will actually tell you a percentage of the people who saw your post that weren't following you. That can be a really good sign for organic growth because it means that your post is showing up in places that's not just your followers' feeds. So now let's bring it back to my experiment and the interesting thing that Libby observed about Instagram reach. Normally when we're thinking about how we can increase our reach on Instagram, we do the typical stuff like add relevant hashtags, add location tags, tag other relevant brand accounts, all those kind of things. And these are all great strategies and they definitely work. It is very much the slow and steady approach and I would encourage you to keep on doing those things. Libby noticed something interesting that was outside of those regular strategies that seemed to be contributing to the reach of her posts. Libby sent me some of her Instagram insights to take a look at and what we both noticed was her single image posts seem to always get a higher reach than her carousel posts. So here's just a look at the sample data that she sent me. You can see that the first two are carousel posts and they got you know around 3,000 or so reach. And then when we look at the single image posts, their reach is almost double or more the reach of the carousel posts. I found this super fascinating because I think a lot of us tend to lean towards carousel posts because we think of them as being more engaging and have potential to be shown to more people. But as it turns out, single image posts might actually 
be better at getting you higher reach. So of course, I wanted to test this out for myself and see if I had similar results with my own Instagram content. So with that being said, let's take a look at my Instagram insights from some of my recent posts and see what we can find by analyzing it. Before we dive into my analytics, I wanna give a huge shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Lynx. But before you skip over the next 45 seconds, I just wanna tell you if you have an Instagram account and you are trying to get your followers to click on the link in your bio, then you're not gonna to wanna to miss this because this has been a serious game changer for me when it comes to directing Instagram traffic to my other content. Lynx is a super beautiful and modern link menu page for your Instagram bio. I've been using it for a couple months now and I am obsessed with how beautiful and clean the design is and also how easy it is to update and add new links to it whenever I have a new YouTube video go live. What I love the most about it is that you can actually add thumbnails to your link. You can add little animations. So when you open it up, it will jump up and down or slide in. And I think that's a really fun way to grab attention and send your Instagram traffic to a certain destination. The best thing about links is that you can start using it for free today. You can go ahead and sign up with the link in my bio. There's a lot of amazing free features that is gonna help you direct your Instagram traffic to your other content but if you wanna be able to fully customize it to your brand's aesthetic, add thumbnails, add animations, and all that fun stuff, then I would highly recommend upgrading to the premium account because in my opinion, it is definitely worth it. So go ahead and sign up for links today at the link in my description. And you can also go check out my Instagram bio if you wanna see what it looks like in action. So for this study, I just selected four different posts that I've made to my Instagram feed over the past couple months, two single image posts and two carousel posts because I wanted to see, you know, what the results would be. Starting with the carousel post, we have this one of me posing um, with my thousand helmet on from a few weeks ago. The reach of this post was 6,490 and 21% of those people were not already following me who saw it. So that's interesting. 21% of that 6,000 or so people saw this because of a hashtag or it being shared or whatever. And again, this was a carousel post. So that's sort of like your standard, what we're getting for carousel posts. The other example that I have is a more recent photo of me in my pajamas. Again, this was a carousel post and this one got 5,562 reach. I reach of 5,562, I guess is how you would say it. And only 7% of those people were not following me. So the majority of people who saw this carousel post were already following me. They probably saw it in their feed. Okay. So that's kind of what we're getting for carousel posts is around the five to 6,000 range of reach. Now let's look at two posts that I made that were just standalone single images. This first one that I made in Photoshop with all my arms reaching in with different like cameras and stuff, got a reach of 9,631 and 43% of those people were not already following me. That's crazy, that's almost half of the people who saw that post were potentially new followers. Like that is a huge opportunity for organic growth because it means that, you know, roughly let's say 4,000 people that maybe would click the follow button if they liked my content saw that image. That's a huge opportunity for growth. Let's look at my last example, another single image post. This one, me doing a power pose on the couch, got a reach of 8,081 people and 35% of them were not already following me. So that's pretty good, that's a third. Just from the small sample size, we can see that my single image posts definitely got a higher reach than my carousel posts. Now, it's not the most extreme difference. I realize that going from let's say 6,000 to 9,000, like it's not huge, but it is significant when you see that pretty consistently across all those kinds of posts. I found this really intriguing and it led me to ask myself like why are these kinds of posts seeming to do better with reach and this is the theory that i came up with my theory is that single image posts tend to perform better in the context of the explore page and the hashtag pages where they can come to the top and therefore get more reach i think when people are looking through hashtags or the explore page they're not necessarily ready to like dive in and swipe through a whole carousel of posts they'd rather just kind of take in the vibe of the collection of images and maybe engage with the ones that stand out the most so i feel like that's why single image posts would tend to rise to the top in those areas where they can get that bigger reach. Whereas I think the benefit of carousel posts is that 
they do get more engagement on your feed when your followers see them because they give you an opportunity to provide a lot of extra value. A lot of people like to do slideshows with different tips and tricks and information. And I think that that's a really good way to provide value to your followers and also keep them engaged because Instagram does track how long people spend on your post. So that's also why people like to do long captions. And I think that for many of us, if we look at our insights, we will notice that those carousel posts get a lot of saves and shares. And that is also good for organic growth. Overall, my personal philosophy when it comes to Instagram growth is all about balance. While I still don't have 100% conclusive evidence about this, I would need a much larger sample size to do that. I do think that single image posts tend to get more reach. However, I still wouldn't suggest only posting single image posts. I think that carousels really do have a benefit in providing engagement and value to your followers. I really think that for an Instagram strategy to be successful, it's all about having a variety of different kinds of content so that you can serve your different kinds of followers in whatever way they like best. So you can create those single image posts for that really punchy impact that is gonna help you get bigger reach. You can create carousel posts so that you can provide lots of value and get good engagement. You can create IGTV videos so that you can have a longer form deeper connection with your most dedicated followers and provide lots of value in that way. And you can create Instagram reels to get that big discoverability to show up on the explore page and to add a little fun playfulness to your Instagram feed as well. All of these formats have their own benefits and purposes within your wider Instagram strategy. So I would really encourage you to take advantage of all of them. If you're still just sticking to single image posts or even carousels every time on your feed and maybe posting to stories every once in a while, I would really encourage you to start branching out, try IGTV, try Reels, try posting more unique stuff to your stories. Fully taking advantage of all these different features is really what creates a robust Instagram strategy for growth. And I also think it's just more fun and creative to experiment with all these different formats rather than being stuck in the same exact kind of content every time. You never know when trying something new might just pop off and you'll figure out that you're actually really great at reels or that IGTV really works well for you. So you just have to keep experimenting and trying different things. Speaking of trying different things, I have all kinds of different advice about Instagram growth and content creation that you can check out in this playlist. The best way you can support my channel is to just keep on watching. So make sure you click on this playlist and just sit back, relax, get out a notebook and learn some stuff about Instagram. Also make sure you subscribe because it means the world to me and I'd love to have you stick around for longer. So yeah, subscribe, go watch this playlist. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video over there. <laughs> Bye.